Hello, my name is Bruno Borges and I'm here today to talk to you about migrating applications from GlassFish to WebLogic Server. The agenda for this talk today will be a quick GlassFish recap and then an introduction to Oracle WebLogic Server as well installation architecture concepts and management features. Then we'll move on to migrating a Java EE application by first moving common Java EE resources and then taking a look at more specific web logic tools that can facilitate facilitate um, the process of migrating the application. And finally, additional information about other uh, concepts, other resources that also that might also be uh, required to migrate. So Glassfish recap. A few commercial support considerations. Oracle WebLogic is now a sole commercial application server, increasing new features and standard support for its customers and users. Oracle GlassFish Server 3.1.x is still supported until 2016 and 2019 for Premier and Extended support respectively. The open source edition of GlassFish will continue to be the reference implementation of the Java EE platform and uh, the version 5 is planning to be the RI for Java EE 8. Any other version of, of Oracle um, GlassFish open source edition may be commercially supported by third parties as any other open source project. So to understand WebLogic Server, let's take a quick look and an, uh, an overview of the application server. WebLogic is the number, number one application server in the market. It is a Java EE6 certified application server and it is integrated with the major IDEs such as JDeveloper, Eclipse, NetBeans, and IntelliJ. It is uh, certified and supported for uh, on Oracle JDK 7 and uh, it comes with a very um, key and important um, tools for development environments and continuous integration and continuous delivery such as the Apache Maven plugin and Apache end tasks. It is a, it is, the product is complemented by a full Java middleware stack. So Oracle WebLogic comes with uh, the Oracle JDK and advanced commercial features such as mission control, flat recorder, uh, it, it will also come with the Oracle HTTP server, part of the uh, web tier product, and uh, customers can also take advantage of the in-memory data grid for HTTP sessions called Coherence Web, as well any other development tools and frameworks such as ADF and TopLink. WebLogic is a unique in a, a, a application server. Um, providing advanced features for Oracle Database 12C, such as the multi-tenancy pluggable databases and application continuity for Oracle Rack through the active GridLink data source. It is also optimized for Oracle Exalogic engineer systems, and it is also supported on public clouds, such as Oracle on public cloud or Microsoft Azure or Amazon. For the installation process of WebLogic, there are two types uh, that must be uh, understood. One of them is for uh, the development environment, uh, which is not supported for production environments. It is a 180 megabyte zip file that can be just simply extracted and then configured on any environment such as Windows, Linux, and OS X. You can also reduce the footprint and uh, for uh, by disabling EJB, JMS, and JCA containers by calling the server type uh, parameter. You can also uh, in increase your development productivity by enabling fast swap, which allows you to interactive uh, redeploy your Java classes in WebLogic. For the production environment. Uh, Customers and users must use the full distribution file. The file is around 150 megabytes, but it's due to uh, the size is due to uh, several 
um, content provided in this installation. Uh, some, for example, samples and example applications, uh, domain templates for Oracle Fusion Midware, the Oracle OPatch installer um, utility for patching your web logic, and uh, also the RCU for Fusion Midware infrastructure. A few concepts, architectural concepts, must be understood as well, especially when you want a clustered environment. Um, the good thing is that the good thing is that basically uh, the concepts are the same. Uh, all you need to be aware of are a few name changes. So, for example, take two uh, domains: one for Glassfish and one for WebLogic. Both domains will have one uh, server that will be the administrative server. In Glassfish, it's called DAS, and in WebLogic, it's called admin server. And then we can also have two machines, two physical servers on Glassfish domain, each one running one server instance. For the WebLogic uh, domain, the concept we call is machines. So we have two physical machines, each one with another concept called managed server. Now, you can also, of course, have one physical machine with two or more uh, server instances on Glassfish and as well on WebLogic. A machine can have two or more managed servers. For management capabilities from the admin server, it is required for uh, the operator to start the node manager in each machine. Uh, it, is, um, it is possible to run multiple node managers for uh, multiple um, web logic versions, but usually customers and users just run one node manager and uh, use only one version on each machine. Finally, you can of course select the service that will be part of a cluster. Both uh, application servers have the same concept. You can create a cluster, in this case it will be cluster zero for all uh, both servers, and uh, each cluster will have uh, two server instances or managed servers um, participating in that cluster but each one running on a different physical machine. It is possible to define a cluster using server instances or managed servers that are running on top of the same physical machine that's uh, not uh, tied to the concept of clustering in both servers. Now for management features, um, Glassfish users will be very happy and, uh, and familiar with most of the web admin console on WebLogic, which is very rich and fully capable. Uh, it is possible to also uh, make use of the role-based access control and features such as WebLogic scripting to through the web admin console you can mark a record uh, all the interactions and that will generate a script for you. Um, you can also uh, remote, remote access the WebLogic server and get information or manipulate um, the runtime and beans through JMX server. Um, the two initial versions of WebLogic 12.1 and 12.2 comes with the REST management services. Uh, it will allow you to monitor through through REST services, like for example, the status of an application or data source or the number of messages in a JMS server uh, destination, etc. Um, for more capable management, um, REST management, um, we plan to 12.13 have a full capable um, service. So you will be able to, for example, deploy an application through the REST API or, or create JDBC resources or JMS resources, all of that through the REST API. So let me take you to, uh, through a quick WebLogic demo. Um, what I want to show you is the installation process of WebLogic. You just you can just call java slash jar weblogic the full distribution file 
and it will extract the files and then invoke the Oracle Universal Installer. The Universal Installer is the same tool for all Oracle app products. So you, if you are familiar with, the, with it for another product that you've been used to, um, you're gonna be very uh, happy to see the and have the same experience uh, by using the same tool. So this tool here will allow you to install the WebLogic server on a web on a Oracle middleware home and select um, the installation type and other other configurations that you can do through the GUI interface. So here I can select between three options: a WebLogic server installation, a coherence installation, or a the complete installation so uh, what I'm gonna do here is just skip all these because I already have the installation done here now to start WebLogic we just need to go to the middleware home which in my case is MW1212 and then go to the domain application and start WebLogic now, I already have the application server up and running, so I'm gonna just show you the administration console. Now here, I can just log in and then I can see that I already have four servers, three regular services, servers and one admin server running. Um, if you look at here, these two servers are part of a cluster and they are up and running. They are all associated to a machine as well, which is my local machine. Server 2 is not associated to a cluster, so it is a standalone server running alone in this machine. What I can do here is create a new server, and what I'm going to do is give the port number 7009 and create a new cluster for this server. Now I'm going to give the name cluster two and press finish now i have the server three which is in the state shutdown and associated to cluster two now machine uh, the server three is not associated to the machine so in order to start it needs to have a machine associated to with so we're gonna come here and change the machine and save now we can just go to control select the server 3 and start now we already have the environment to deploy applications let's take a quick look at the glassview server that we are running there is an application here called oracle cup so what i'm gonna do here is check the page for this application and show you what it does so it is a facelets application java e6 with facelets and it's running prime faces it connects to the database and prints a number of uh, teams inside a table so this is the application that we will be migrating the only diff the only thing here important to note is that the create button actually calls JMS. So create creation of new team sent to queue. We need to refresh and then see the last record here. So this is the application that will be migrating to WebLogic. Now the first thing we need to do is migrate JDBC resources and before we do that let's understand a few concepts of between glassfish and weblogic regarding the jdbc resources so migrating java ee applications actually um glassfish and weblogic share uh, several com java ee components so they are using the same implementations for most java ee apis so you see, you, you have Eclipse link for JPA, but you will also have Tyrus for WebSockets in the next 12.3 version. 
which is the uh, Java EE7 API for WebSockets and Tyre is the reference implementation. So there are a lot of uh, implement, uh, reference implementation here being used by, um, by WebLogic and Glassfish, reducing the risks of uh, different behaviors when you migrate from one to another. Now, another uh, good thing about migrating from Glassfish to WebLogic is that WebLogic understands the deployment descriptor of Glassfish. So you don't, you don't actually need to write the WebLogic deployment descriptor. It will use all the information already provided on Glassfish Web XML. A few, a few things to understand. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, the Oracle Glassfish server or the Glassfish server open source edition. Both are basically the same. Um, about the, the deployment descriptor, there is no merge. If you provide a WebLogic XML, that that one will be used, and Glass and and WebLogic will ignore the Glassfish deployment descriptor. Uh, if you want a full list of the properties supported by WebLogic, you can just take a look at the documentation. Now, migrating common Java EE resources. There are basically two uh, two resources that are used a lot on Java EE. The first one is the JDBC resources. Now, Glassfish defines two types of JDBC resources. One is the JN JNDI reference for a connection pool, and the other one is the connection pool itself, uh, which is also the data source. And uh, one connection pool can be referenced by multiple JDBC resources. So you can have multiple JN JNDI names for uh, one connection pool. WebLogic does this a little bit different. It only provides you a uh, data source. So you just go to the web console and create a data source. Now, when you create a data source, you can provide multiple JNDI names. And if you need to tweak the connection pool, you just go to the connection pool tab and you provide advanced, uh, advanced configurations in there. Now, there are three types of JDBC data sources in Glassfish, and I'm sorry, in WebLogic. One of them is the generic data source, which will be uh, probably the one you're going to use when you migrate a data source from Glassfish. Now, if you are using Oracle Rack, you really should consider GridLink data source because it provides, ad provides advanced capabilities for failover and high availability and and uh, application continuity support for transactions, and uh, etc. Now there is another data source called the Modi data source. Um, you can abstract two or more data sources uh, as one, so you can have either load balancing or failover. Let's say you have two MySQL servers, and you want to load balance the the data load on those two data uh, databases. Um, Another good thing about WebLogic is that it comes with uh, some JDBC drivers out of the box. So when, uh, when you install WebLogic, you already have the Oracle, MySQL, Derby, DB2, SQL Server, Sybase, and Beamformix uh, JDBC drivers. Now, in case, if, in case you need to install a third-party JDBC drivers, uh, for example, the PostgreSQL or uh, let's say a NoSQL uh, database, you can put that jar file inside the domain uh, lib for our domain based deployment, or you can also add the jar file to the server lib and then you modify the class path in the scripts. Um, to create the JDBC resources in WebLogic, you just do a side by side manual configuration. And if you need to migrate a lot of resources, uh, we, com we, we recommend you to combine the Glassfish AS Admin and WebLogic script in two to automate the process. But in most cases, all you need is the same JNDI name to, uh, created in WebLogic. So let me show you how to create a JDBC data source in, in, in WebLogic. So to start, we're gonna look here and we have the JDBC Oracle Cup and the MySQL Oracle Cup connection pool. These, these are the ones that we're gonna create. One is associated to another. If you look at the JDBC Oracle Cup, it's connected to the MySQL Oracle Cup connection pool. So 
let's go back to WebLogic and let's create a data source. Now, here there is a data source already created. I'm going to delete it. Now I select the generic data source. I will give the same name as the connection pool. And I will give the GNDI name Oracle Cup. Now it's a MySQL database, so I'm going to select MySQL as a database type. And finally, I will, since this is an app, the application that I'm migrating, also utilize JMS. So we are required to enable the two phase commit emulation. Now, finally, the database name is Oracle Cup, the host name is localhost. Database username will be Ruth, MySQL, MySQL. Now, all this information came from here. If you go to the connection pool on Glassfish, uh, you see the additional properties. All we really want here is the uh, database name, the user, and the server name. The port number, unless it's different from default, you just leave it. You don't need that. And then, next, now we can test the configuration. The connection is succeeded. Next. And now here, this is important. Because this is a very uh, rich domain, we need to select which target we want to deploy this JDBC data source. Now, let's say our application is deployed to cluster zero. The application will only work if the data source is also deployed on cluster zero. So to facilitate things, uh, we're just going to select all of them and deploy this data source to all servers and clusters. And there we go. Now we have the data source migrated. Now let's go back to our presentation. Now, about JMS. So both servers support standard JMS 1.1 API, because that's part of the Java EE6 version. Uh, both servers have their own JMS broker already built inside and for most use cases uh, the applications are upgradable by a simple redeploy as long as resources are correct created. For example, you keep the same JNDI name. Now for additional setup, uh, it might be required for when specific non-standard features or JMS headers or security layer are being used. So you may want to take a look at your application before you migrate to make sure it is using only standard uh, API and features. And uh, the JMS headers are compatible and exist on WebLogic as well. Now, uh, one of the difference between Glassfish and WebLogic is that the Glassfish enhanced cluster for JMS does not support file store. It only supports a uh, high available JDBC store. Now, WebLogic provides a high available JMS cluster with the shared file store as well as the JDBC store. Glassfish load balances the message driven beans at random, while WebLogic provides a uniform distributed destination concept. So the UDD um, allows WebLogic to have a better control of the load balance and failover. So whenever um, an MDB is added, um, I'm sorry, a server is added and the application is deployed on that server, a new uh, MDB instance is added to the cluster and more messages can be consumed that way. So if, an, a, new JM, if a JMS server is removed, that MDB is automatically undeployed. Now, WebLogic 12.2 uh, supports a new feature called dynamic clustering. So you can automate the creation and, and, and scaling of JMS servers and resources um, with this feature. WebLogic also provides the whole server migration and service migration. Fe these are features for more guaranteed high availability. So let's say there is a fail, uh, uh, there's a, a the, the physical machine fails. So what we need in this case is a whole server migration and then everything that was running on that JMS server that failed will, moved, will be moved to a, a new physical machine. For the service migration, what happens is 
the JMS server can uh, move to a, a different web logic server um, if there is any problem or it might web logic might try to restart that but it can also uh, it is also able to move the JMS server to a new uh, to a different ser uh, managed server instance. Okay, now let's take a look at the JMS demo. What you want to do here is migrate the JMS queue and the JMS connection factory that are configured in Glassfish. So let's go to the Glassfish uh, server and take a look at the resources provided there. Uh, first, we want to migrate the connection factory. The JMS Oracle Cup Q factory uh, must be created created on on WebLogic. So on WebLogic Server Administration Console, we go to the Services tree tree, um, and then first we need to create the JMS server. Let's give it a name: JMS Server Zero. Let's select the file store, and let's select the admin server as a target for. Uh, migratable target to deploy this JMS server. Okay, now we need a JMS module with all these these resources that we want to migrate from Glassfish to WebLogic. So, for this system module, let's keep it simple and select the admin server and click on next and click on finish. So before now, before adding resources to it, let's uh, create a sub-deployment. Sub-deployment is a feature of WebLogic that uh, helps you to uh, group uh, JMS resources, for example, queues, topics, and connection factories. So it is easier to target these resources to specific servers or JMS servers, instances, or clusters. Now let's create one and let's give it a name, sub-deployment. And let's put this one on the JMS server itself. Finish. And now let's go back to the configuration tab. Now that we have a sub-deployment for this system module, let's create the resources. The first one you want to create is the connection factory. Now the connection factory will be the Oracle Cup Q factory and let's put that as the name as well. Let's select next and you see the default target is activated and it already selected admin server. Let's finish and now let's, let's create the Oracle Cup Q. So the Oracle Cup Q is JMS slash Oracle Cup Q. Let's select Q next. Let's remove the slash. And there we go. Next. Now here we have to select the sub deployment so this resource can be available to uh, servers. Okay, so we select the JMS server here and finish. Okay, now we have Oracle Cup Q and Oracle Cup Connect Q Factory, all those correctly deployed in our infrastructure. Now let's deploy and finish our migration of a Java EE application. Just to give you a sense of what's going on here, this is the uh, Glassfish Web XML file, and we want to migrate and take advantage of these deployment descriptor without adding the WebLogic deployment descriptor to show you that this application is that this file is being interpreted by WebLogic uh, this is the context root of this application so let's take a look at the deployments let's deploy Oracle Cup next next let's select the main server next and finish. So our, applic our application is running fine on Glassfish. So this is it. The 
glassfish instance and let's delete this record here let's check weblogic okay weblogic is running the application so let's do a test and let's open the weblogic see the port number 7001 this is the uh, weblogic uh, port and note 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 here the context root that weblogic read from the glassfish web deployment descriptor is the same as in glassfish and there is no weblogic xml file and here it is the prime faces um, interface reading data from the database so let's create a record um, the create feature of this application will send a message to the queue and the message driven bin will read that that information and create a record so actually this is an asynchronous insertion of the data into the database creation of new team sent to queue there is no update in here because it's a, uh, an asynchronous call so i press refresh and there it is web logic so let's go to glassfish also there I'll delete and number four there is no more web logic so there you go the application redeployed with jms and and jdbc from glassfish to web logic without any code change or extra deployment descriptor all you had to do was to create the resources on web logic now let's go back to the to the presentation and i'll talk to you about a, a few other things um first of all uh sometimes you you must be uh aware of class loading issues uh, you, you may you might you may face class loading issues uh, in that case glassfish applications can define the class loader delegate feature which will def uh, tell the glassfish if the classes inside web inf should be read before or after the system class loader um, web logic interprets these automatically but the only thing you, you must be aware of is that it's the behavior is opposite so when delegate is true it means prefer web if classes false on web logic which is why the default are opposite from each other so just take take care uh, take a quick look at these when you are migrating applications this might be confusing at some times but as soon as you get it it's the opposite it's easier um shared libraries so how to deploy shared libraries both uh, application servers offer three options uh, you can deploy the shared library on the installation server lib which will make it your library available to all domains or you can put that inside the specific lib domain and finally you can deploy that as a specific application library the difference on the third uh, option is that on weblogic you actually you don't you don't deploy a library specific to an application like in glassfish you can actually deploy that as a deployable artifact and select targets for example managed servers or even clusters so the shared library can be um, easily deployed across a huge cluster or a domain with several clusters uh, without any hassle and then application just applications just need to reference that now uh, the preferred way to share uh, use shared libraries in web logic is you either uh, put that inside your domain home lib or for more grand control uh, you deploy them as a version artifacts the advantage of using versioning uh, uh, for 
shared libraries is that you can have different versions of a library coexisting in a WebLogic domain. That also gives you a better management through the Web Admin Console uh, and most importantly allows you zero downtime upgrades. Um, and again, your applications just need to reference that library on the uh, WebLogic XML descriptor. Now, this is the this is the first time you uh, uh, hear about WebLogic descriptor. Um, there is no uh, unfortunately unfortunately there is no um, similar feature in Glassfish, so WebLogic cannot understand that. So you really need to define the WebLogic descriptor and move any custom configuration from the Glassfish deployment descriptor into WebLogic. Now, you may face uh, issues with conflicting classes and libraries. For that, WebLogic provides you a class loader analysis tool. Uh, we call that CAT. So uh, basically you can figure out what's wrong with your application class loader and this tool will propose you a solution to isolate uh, the classes with a filtering class loader uh, feature. So let's take a quick look at how this works. Um, first of all, let's uh, deploy a shared library inside WebLogic. So WebLogic 12C comes with JSF, um, JSF 2.1, because it's a Java E6 uh, application server, but it allows you to deploy JSF 1.2 and 2.0 as well, just in case you really need that specific version. So to do that, you go to the WL server slash common slash deployable libraries inside your WebLogic installation directory and you select JSF 1.2 for example and then you press next next let me go back here and show you this install this deployment as a library so it will be available for other deployments to share next let's select admin server next next and finish so this will make this shared library available to applications inside this target inside this uh, admin server target so two properties are very important for shared libraries one is the specification version and the other one the implementation version Make sure that you specify these, otherwise you won't be able to use uh, zero downtime upgrades. You're gonna have to really redeploy your application when you upgrade these. And also it won't allow you to have different versions of your shared library in the same uh, domain. Okay, so what's the next thing to do is uh, show you cat so WebLogic class loader analysis tool um, to do that let me let me show you the testing tab for the Oracle Cup application when you go to the testing tab there is a link to class loader analysis tool let's click on these it will deploy it's an on-demand feature and here you can analyze conflicts. Now, there is no conflict here because this is a pure Java EE6 application. But let's, let's, let's uh, put a dependency on a library that, creates, uh, that usually creates uh, conflicts. Let's go to the Maven project, let's go to the Palm, and let's enable the AntR library and let's create let's repackage this application on NetBeans so uh, what I'm doing here is adding the dependency for NTR now this library here already comes with WebLogic so whenever an application is using this library it is highly recommended that you isolate these uh, the class loader so you you use specifically this version that it is 
package with your application so let's go back to weblogic and let's redeploy our our application let's select update and note the source path is basically the same let's press it's not basically the same it's exactly the same sorry and finish now what our logic is doing here is on deploying your application and redeploying from this source path which is the updated war file with the uh, the deployed uh, int or uh, library so let's go to the class loader analysis tool again and let's select our application here it is let's analyze conflicts and there we go uh, web logic found potential conflicts and they do not seem to have been resolved uh, basically what WebLogic is telling you hey these classes here are conflicting with uh, you know, within the class loader so uh, you really should isolate them and here's the suggested solution so what this does is prefer application packages basically it's telling you to put these inside your WebLogic XML deployment descriptor and it will isolate these classes to be loaded from the application packages instead of the system class loader. Uh, that's it. Let's um, go back to the presentation. So we've covered the shared library in WebLogic CAT. Now Sometimes you will want to do a massive migration of resources and automate uh, as many tasks as possible as well. So for that, WebLogic provides you a scripting tool called WL, w, WLST uh, for administering a domain. It's uh, based on Jiton, so you, you, you basically write a Python script and you can use for production or development environments or even continuous integration continuous delivery you can really automate anything through WebLogic scripting tool tool so for migrating resources uh, we recommend you to use the online connection mode uh, for that work you go to your WebLogic environment and call the set WLSE environment uh, script and then you can invoke the Java WebLogic WST uh, class. Um, it will give you a shell, it will prompt you with a shell and from there you can just call the connect method to a local or remote uh, WebLogic server. Now there are a few things to, to note here. Um, what will give you a very interesting uh, tool is the combination of GlassFish, GlassFish AS admin, uh, the utility command uh, to extract information from GlassFish domain. Uh, you can save data into a file from there. Uh, for example, uh, redirecting the output of AS admin. Uh, you can use the web admin console in WebLogic to record a macro and get a, an initial uh, Py script so you don't have to really start from scratch. Then you customize that script and add extra code to read the GlassFish data and then you can easily recreate those resources in WebLogic domain. There is no, there is no uh, out of the box script for that. You really need to work out on which things you need to migrate and how to do that exactly. But if you combine those scripts with a powerful shell, you can have an automated solution. Now a few tips, for example, how to migrate, how to use these tools to migrate JDBC resources. So here you take the list JDBC resources command on AS, AS admin. Um, using a few Linux uh, commands, you can get the output of the, um, 
JDBC resources you may want to migrate. Uh, then you can get the, which JDBC connection pool is being used by that uh, JDBC resource. So, for example, you call the ASDMIN get resources, uh, get command, and you specify the resources uh, dot JDBC slash uh, hyphen resource dot your JNDI name. Uh, again, with a few Linux tweaks, you can get the the final name with of the connection pool you need to migrate so with the connection pool at hand what you really uh, the next step would be to get the properties of that connection pool so this is a this is the command the as admin get command we will allow you to get any information about any resource in glassfish so here you have an example of an output of such command now, finally, you need to create the WebLogic scripting tool. Uh, here on this uh, snippet code, you have a sample of how a code for creating JDBC works, JDBC data sources uh, work. Um, you can see the full script of this sample here at bit.ly slash WST underline script. Now, additional information. Um, when you need to migrate security rooms, it will really depend very much on how your application uh, was designed in terms of uh, how it will be migrated for to WebLogic. Um, when an application is secured by LDAP, it is much easier to do so because you don't rely on anything in your in the application server. Everything is delegated to the LDAP server. Uh, other rooms may require extra considerations. For example, you look at the you look at the i i planet or novel um, rooms. They might require extra parameters, and or if if you deployed a custom room inside your Glassfish domain or a custom login module. It will really uh, it will require uh, more detailed information on how to move that to WebLogic. You will probably need to align with the several options that WebLogic provides and choose the best one that that is most compatible with the security room that you are using in your application. WebLogic comes with several. Uh, authentication providers, uh, but if you are using a J JDBC room in your Glassfish domain, uh, you can definitely uh, reuse the database structure and data inside uh, there. Um, so all you need to do is create a security room and add an authentication authentication provider. You can use either a SQL authenticator. Uh, for more, um, for the better management capabilities, for example, the SQL Authenticator allows you to uh, create, delete, update uh, date, uh, users and passwords. Uh, if you do that uh, outside of your uh, of the application server, for example, through your own application, maybe you want to use the read-only SQL Authenticator. Uh, used only by uh, to read data from the database and authenticate users. Um, you will really, you, you will need to adjust the SQL commands under your provider specific tab. Um, one thing you don't need to do if you are not using the WebLogic deployment descriptor is that the security rule mappings are understood by WebLogic, so you don't really need to provide a WebLogic deployment descriptor just for this. So conclusion here, um, Java e, the Java E platform allows easier migration of applications from Glassfish to WebLogic. Um, one thing uh, we didn't see here, but if your Java E application is using the data source definition annotation, you don't even need to create data source. It will be created for you uh, because it is defined inside the, your application. 
um, WebLogic support of Google Ads Deployment Descriptor really uh, facilitate thing, things. So allows you an easier redeployment. You don't have to. You don't have to take care of uh, porting the deployment script of Glassfish to WebLogic. The AS Admin and, and WebLogic scripting tool provide provide you with an easy way to do migration of a massive amount of resources. So let's say you have a domain with 50, 60 data sources or a, a hundred of JMS destinations. Those tools can definitely help you do that. Um, WebLogic and Glassfish are sharing uh, similar concepts and in, including Java EE implementations. So that facilitates a lot the understanding by developers, infrastructure operators, reduce risks and, and, and helps uh, to speed up the migration process. Um, and definitely, if, and finally, WebLogic is or Java middleware strategical product. Um, so whenever you need a Java middleware environment, WebLogic can leverage that with um, very, very high quality uh, features and, um, and support and innovation, etc. So that's it. Uh, if you want to know more about WebLogic, you can follow the channels and the WebLogic community. It is a great community as well from uh, of Oracle customers and partners and users, uh, including dependent uh, consultants or Oracle based directors it's, uh, and so on. So keep in touch and, and thank you very much for watching this webinar.